Hey guys, Adam with Fanic. Uh, thanks for uh, tuning in. I had a overwhelming response from our subscribers saying, please do a video on DCS. So uh, thanks for requesting it. Without further ado, we're here. Um, before I dive right into it, I have to mention that DCS, um, it can be as complex or as simple as we make it. Um, I would recommend taking the FANUC training course. You see here, FANUCAmerica.com, under the support and training tabs, uh, we do have a DCS dual check safety class. Uh, you can see the, the USA pricing here. It's a three-day class. It's three eight-hour days, uh, and it's going to teach you everything. Uh, going to go into great detail, and you're going to be a pro. Um, I can't fit 24 hours <laughs> worth of information into a YouTube video, but I'm going to do my best to give you a, a basic rundown and get you smarter uh, than you were before you clicked on this link. So let's, uh, let's, let's talk about this a little bit. Uh, dual check safety, what is it for? The, the whole reason of DCS is to limit the robot's working envelope, limit where this robot can go, uh, and protect your investments. You know, don't let it crash into things. Uh, don't let it leave a certain area, prevent interactions with humans, all that good stuff. So this robot here uh, that I put in RoboGuide, um, I've equipped it with the Advanced DCS Package. Um, the Basic DCS Package is nice, but the Advanced gives you some really cool tools on the Teach Pendant uh, that we'll show you later. Uh, diving in here, when you buy a robot with the DCS Package, the first thing that you're going to see, uh, especially if you're in RoboGuide here, is a couple DCS menus, uh, some that are specific to the robot and some that are specific to what we build. Let me show you the robot first. If I make the DCS robot model visible, these bubbles, uh, these invisible bubbles, they're invisible in real life obviously, are, are showing you the protected space that is mathematically being considered as that robot moves around. So as you're moving this robot around and you're running and you're doing your work, any moving part of the robot, which is why you don't see it on the base, it, that's not going anywhere, um, any moving part of the robot is protected by these bubbles. So what happens is as the robot is moving and considering safe zones, uh, it's not actually the robot, you know, here's a servo here. Uh, it's not the servo we're looking at. It's this safe space around the servo, around the knuckles. It's not the J4 link. It's the space around the J4 link. That'll be important to understand. So this comes stock from FANUC. Yes, you can change the bubbles. Yes, you can modify it. No, I don't recommend you do it. We did a really good job modeling it. Leave it alone. Um, but what you do need to do is tell the robot what it has. What's it carrying? So you can see on my screen here that this gripper tooling is not being considered for safety. Let's get to work. Uh, over here, uh, we have a DCS user model. So I just showed you the DCS robot model. That's easy. But a user model is something that we're going to build around here. In order for a RoboGuide to show me the user model, I first have to define that we're going to use it. Um, and then we'll jump into it. So first things first. In DCS, you can limit the robot's motion based on joints. Um, you know, obvious uh, J1, where's it going to go? J5, J6, that's easy. Or you can do it in Cartesian, X, Y, Z. This is abundantly the popular way to do it. So this is what we're talking about today. So when I crack open this menu, uh, a lot to take in here. Um, and we're going to get back to it uh, once we build a user model. But I want to show you CPC is a Cartesian position check. You have the ability of building and defining up to 32 Cartesian position checks. A, a Cartesian position check, a CPC, 
is any go or no go zone. You can call it a restricted space, a working space, a stay inside space or stay outside space, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it is some area that the robot needs to either go inside or go outside. While looking at this, the, the, the zone requirements, first, it's asking us, what group are we doing? Well, group one, I only have one robot. And then what models? Well, by default, there's a robot model. Of course, of course we want it to look at the robot model. Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't want the arms and the links to trip your DCS zone. That's fine. Um, I'm going to leave it in. But what else do I want? I also want it to look at a UM, a user model, this, this link over on the left. I want it to look at a UM. Uh, we can also add other things. We can add more user models. Uh, we can add tool models. We're not going to talk about that. It starts getting complex. But for right now, I'm just going to say, hey, CPC, look at my robot and look at my user model. And then we'll get back to this. All right, let's build a user model. So inside the user model, I can build up to 16 different models per robot. And of the different models that I can build, I can have up to 10 elements per model. So that's up to 160 elements I can build. What is an element? Well, let's go like this. We'll leave that as UM1 and we'll just call this gripper. Save. Now, what I'm going to do, a user model, is building more green bubbles around your tool. So, the first thing it's going to say is, well, I want to work with element one, okay? Where do I want to build my element? Do I want to build it off of J1, J2, J3, J4, J5? Maybe I have something, you know, bolted onto J3 up here. Uh, you know, there's some mounting bolts here. So maybe I have a big J box back here. I need to put a bubble around that J box. Um, for this one, I'm going to say, hey, it's coming right off the faceplate because that's where my tool's coming from. Now look here. We're going to skip down. We're going to look at the shape. There's four ways that you can build an element. And we're going to go through these. One is a point, which really I want you to think of that as a sphere. Okay, and let me show you. If I say, give me a, a radius of 300 millimeters and let me move it down 200 millimeters. You know what? I need to go back here. Pardon me. I need to turn on my CPC or we're not going to be able to see the bubble. There's the bubble I'm building. Sorry, I had to hit my checkbox in order to see the bubble. Let's go back to the user model. So here is a bubble. A, a point, a point that has a XYZ location in space, and, this, and, and that XYZ is the center uh, of the point, and then a radius. So if I were to make this 400, I have a bigger one. Uh, I can make it 300, and I can move it farther down from the faceplate. So now if I look at this, that does a good job. That encompasses my tool very well. It's also inefficient because the bubble is what's going to be considered when it's hitting your CPCs. Um, so I really want this kind of tucked into the tool. So let's, let's try something else. Let's try a line segment. You see that now that I have the ability to do two points, XYZ, XYZ, and a radius. So let me show you what that looks like. Let's start at 000, zero and go down to 250 with that radius. Let's shrink that down so you get a better view. What that did for me, as you can see, is there are two points that are now connected. You see how they're connected? They're connected by this sphere. So what I could do, we can optimize this. Something like that. So now you can see that I have this nice and, and you know what, we could even shrink that, right? We could, we could really optimize that. And, oops, that wasn't shrinking it, that was moving it down uh, 175. Something like that, you're getting the idea. 
Uh, but now I'm, I'm building up the model. That's pretty efficient. That looks good. Let me show you the other ways, just so you know. Two spheres is just like the line, but they're not connected. So if I go like this, now I have two points. You know, I've got the little snowman effect going here. Two points not connected by a line. There's also an option that I really don't want you to use, okay? My recommendation is don't use this unless you have to, but it's called a box. Uh, so the box, you have an offset and a size. Let me go ahead and give it a, a size here. We have a box. I can make it bigger. 300, 300, 450, something like that. You say, Adam, the box looks so great. That's so clean. Why wouldn't I use that? Because it hogs memory terribly. Uh, there's only so much memory that you can use in DCS due to the processing speed required for it to be safety rated. And if you start using boxes, you won't be able to use all your user models or all your CPCs. It will limit you because you'll run out of memory. Why is that? Uh, that's because uh, think if you were the processor. If you knew a point and a radius, then wherever that point is, you just need to stay 300 millimeters away from that point. The math is super easy. But if you have a box, you're running around all day doing a Pythagorean theorem and, and figuring out crisscrosses and, okay, well, here's my point, but where's this point? Where's this point? Where's this surface? It just takes a lot of processing power. Don't use it unless absolutely necessary. Uh, in this one, for, for this, I think my favorite um, is probably going to be the line segment. That looks pretty good, other than I'm probably going to shorten this up a little bit, maybe even a little more. There we go. That looks pretty darn good. That has my tool completely protected no matter how it rotates. Um, yeah, I could maybe make it a little better, but guess what? This is what we're using for now. Um, if I wanted to do more elements, uh, I can add an element. Uh, let's say we add... Uh, another point. Let me give it a little offset so you can see it. All right. So you can add appendages of points and lines and etc. Uh, to your user model one. So you could have a tool that's bent and funny and crooked and offset, or maybe you have a two up tooling or something. You can build more elements uh, of user model one. So you're still in user model one. And you're just building more piece parts to it. We don't need that. Don't need any of this. Zero, zero, zero. I'm just going to wipe this out because it is not relevant for this video. But we will use element one of user model one. Perfect. Now that we have a user model that looks really good, we know our tooling and robot is protected. Now we got to get into the meat and potatoes of where do we want this robot to go and not go. So I'm going to build... CPC1, of course I can rename this, um, I can call it, uh, let's call it the safe working space, give it a nice little name, apply. So let's look down here. This first box, this is only um, relevant in RoboGuide. It's just, hey, do you want it visible? What color do you want it to be? This is RoboGuide specific. Um, by the way, uh, if you're watching this and you're thinking right now, hey, Adam, uh, this looks great in RoboGuide. How do I do it on a teach pendant? I'm going to show you that in a minute. So just bear with me. RoboGuide makes things so much easier. Uh, RoboGuide is life. So let's look here again at the zones. We know that we're going to consider the robot model. We know we're going to consider the user model. Let's look at the, I'm going to skip down because we're not building any safety frames. We're just going to do everything in the world. Um, let's look at the stop type. There's three ways to handle a breach of a CPC. You can either e-stop the robot, which is a power off, so safety rated, you know, wham, it's just like hitting the e-stop. There's also a controlled stop, which is equivalent of hitting the hold button or pause button. The robot will use the servos to decelerate and come to a controlled stop. Or you can do a not stop, 
Um, sometimes people build uh, CPCs just to know where the robot is. If you set this up as a not stop, then we can uh, take the CPC output and, and, and use that as a digital output, you know, uh, to, a, to a PLC, to an HMI, to a conveyor, you can, whatever, and uh, just let ancillary equipment know, hey, the robot's on the left side, the robot's on the right side, wh whatever it's doing. Um, for here and now, I'm going to consider it a safety rated e-stop. Disabling input. That is an, an input that disables all your work. Um, so as you look at this, there are a lot of different inputs. Odds are you would probably be using what we call an SIR. That is a safety input relay. Um, these robots come with two safety inputs. Uh, they're dual channel, so there's four wires. Um, and what you can do is you could wire a light curtain or an area scanner or something uh, that says, hey, um, if there's nobody here, don't stop. You know, maybe someone has to come and get this pallet. So when there's a human in there, I, I want the robot to stop. And when there's not a human there, I don't want the robot to stop. So you can disable uh, these CPCs based upon human presence uh, by defining that and wiring something in. So now we're at the fun part. Now we actually get to draw the zone. For this video and for 99% of what you guys are going to be doing, you're only going to be using diagonals in or diagonals out. Um, we also call it uh, workspace or restricted space. You can call it safe inside or safe outside. You can call it go and no go. Pick your favorite way. But what we're doing is we're defining is the robot okay to be inside it or is the robot okay to be outside it. Because I love RoboGuide, we can do it right on screen. So, uh, diagonals. Let's do some click and drag. If I move this triad and I move it down here and then say next triad and move it up, over, and back, something like this, you can see immediately, let me get it on screen, why we call it diagonals. We have one triad in the lower cor corner and one triad in the upper opposing corner, and that hypotenuse uh, is used to mathematically define what box we have. So as I look at this, let me go back to that first triad, drag him over here. You know, I want my robot to be able to, you know, reach a conveyor and a pallet or, or whatever in this example, right? So here's a nice little box. Um, I need to make the box taller. Otherwise, the robot will always be in breach of the box. So that looks good. And so now you're taking a robot that could feasibly move all over the place and you're restricting it to this box. So I have these triad locations. I'm going to say use locations. You can see where uh, the first triad and second triad are, are located. I'm going to hit apply. So now we have the robot model, we have the user model, and we have a safe inside CPC that is built. Let's take a look at the teach pendant. Say, Adam, how do I do this if I don't have this amazing tool called RoboGuide? Well, what you do is you go Menu, Next, System, DCS, and everything that we just talked about over here is in here. You just got to read a lot more. So let's look here. Cartesian position check. Open. Of all the possible Cartesian position checks, remember you can have up to 32 of these bad boys. I'm scrolling just for the sake of scrolling. Uh, 32 of these. We only have number one enabled. It's called safe working space. Let's look at that. And if you start reading, look, at it. it's everything we just designed. It's a working zone diagonal, so you're safe inside. It's the robot, group one, robot model, user model, and nothing else. And if you look down, here's your XYZ for point one and point two. It's a cat zero stop. It, this is, you know, here's your disabling input if you wanted your SIRs. So this is everything that we already worked on just here. Now, how do you view it, though, right? Reading this does you no good. 
go to the next page. We can view, and here we have a top view, side view, and front view. Here's P1 and P2 of the diagonals. Let me go over here. You can see the robot model in black. You can see the user model in blue, and you can actually see what we're building. Okay, now because I have the advanced DCS package on this Teach Pendant, I can click 4D Graphics. If I click 4D Graphics, now I have basically a little baby version of, uh, of RoboGuide right inside um, my Teach Pendant. Uh, right now it's kind of orange because we haven't applied the changes. I'll talk to you in a minute about that. Need to apply changes. But as you're, you're building this thing, you can look at the 4D graphics uh, and you can see what your boxes and user models um, are going to look like. Shift, single, uh, based on this. You can do the same thing if I previous out of here and I go down to the user model that we built. Detail, here's num uh, user model one, element one, that we called gripper. Here it is. It's the line segment of size 200. We can look in here again. This is all the stuff we just worked on, guys. The first position is zero. The second position is 350. Um, the radius is 200. And again, if I wanted to view it, I could say view. And there you go. Look at here's a side view of the robot showing me the uh, user model highlighted in red. Front view, side view, top view. So you can do all of this from the teach pendant. It's just a little clunkier, um, but you can you can certainly get it all done. So now we're in the DCS menu. We have a little love note on the teach pendant in our status bar saying, hey, you need to apply these parameters um, for, for the user model that we set up and the CPC that we set up. So logic dictates we hit apply. By default, all FANUC robots uh, have their code number as all ones. Uh, you can change this in your settings, but from the factory, it is one, 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 one. Perfect. This is a little screen that allows you to scroll down through a lovely 139 lines of code telling you what you've changed, or you can just say, yeah, I know what I did, and hit OK. Now, all of these changes say pending, and our love note says cycle power to use your new parameters. So let's cycle power. Do you want a cold start? Yep. So on your real robot, you can uh, you can certainly do that using you know function cold start, and that'll work. Or you can physically walk over to the disconnect, flick it off, and flick it back on. And our robot is powered back up, looking good. Let's test our work, guys. Let's. Uh, Throw this teach pendant. Uh, we're in world coordinates. We'll slow it down some. And I'm just going to start jogging this bad boy. Robot is heading over, heading over, heading over. What's going to happen? Stop. So we get a nice visual representation. If I show you the top down, look at You see it's the bubble of the user model, right? It's not the actual tooling. It's the bubble we built is interacting with the CPC that we built, and it's saying, don't go there. Okay, everything stopped. Your teach pendant will give you a little love note at the top. Let me stop jogging this thing. <laughs> Auto save. Uh, we get a little love note that says, DCS, Cartesian Position Limit. If I click on it, it actually says, your Cartesian Position Limit number one, safe working space, Group one, the robot, it's telling me what is being violated. CPC number one is violated. Um, so what do we do? Well, your robot is smart enough to only jog away from the violation, not farther into it. So if I do a shift reset to clear the fault and do a Y positive to get out of there, robot's happy. Let's continue to test. Let's do one more thing. I want to show you one more thing. Let's take this bad boy and go straight up. Uh, I made it a little too tall. Let's back up. Very 
good, and now go up. There we go. Needed to violate another zone. So uh, I did that to show you that it is, again, it is the robot model. Maybe if I go to a front view, it'll be a little clearer. It is the robot model. It is not the knuckle of the robot. It's that safe space. That way you have a little separation before anything happens. But as soon as we have that breach, it stops moving. So same thing. Uh, if we look at the love note, um, safe zone is violated. Okay. Let's do a shift reset. Let's bring this robot back down into happy zone. Okay. Next, I want to show you some more fun stuff uh, before we call it a day here. Um, we have a nice safe working space and I want this robot to go from the pallet to the conveyor. That's awesome. But you know what? I don't want this robot or the tooling to smash into this rack. Uh, maybe this rack uh, has some tool changes on there or, you know, it's, it's inventory that you had nowhere else in your shop to put it. And we can't have the robot slamming into this and it shouldn't go over there anyway. Okay, so let's do it. Let's go into our DCS CPCs. Let's build another one. Okay. Let's call this one um, the rack, something like that, okay? Same thing, I want it to consider the robot model. I also want it to consider my user model. I want it to e-stop, but instead of diagonals in, I want it to be diagonals out, meaning keep the robot out of there, okay? Um, real quick, I'm gonna go into CPC1 and make it invisible, just so we can see the CPC2 better. Let's go ahead and define this guy. So I'm going to come out here, come over here, and go down, something like that. Next triad. And watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to define this rack. Oh, that's not too bad. I didn't actually do pretty good on my first click. Um, let's go back to this first one. Tuck it in real nice. Look at that. Now I have this rack protected, almost protected. There we go. I now have a rack protected. Okay. I'm going to say use locations, apply. So now because we're saying diagonal out, that means the robot and its components, the, the user model, always need to be outside of that. But we're also saying that the robot always has to be inside of that. So think in your head the Boolean logic that we just devised here. We've just devised this L-shaped area. The robot must stay inside the green while also staying outside of the red, which means your net result is this uh, you know, L-shaped floor plan, a box with a box chopped out of where this robot can actually do its work. And you can compound these in any multitude of ways. I could put a diagonals out that's around my conveyor so that I can set parts on the conveyor, but I can't jog into the conveyor and crash. Okay, so let's apply these changes and do a quick test to show you how this is going to work. Menu, 0, 6, DCS. You can see that we added a CPC. So we go apply, magic, 1, 1, 1, 1. We hit OK. We do a cycle power, and once these um, are saved, we'll uh, we'll jog this thing around and uh, and see what the teach pendant has to say about the work that we're doing. Wonderful. Okay, so let's uh, let's get a little view here. Uh, I'm going to take my teach pendant. Um, I'm in world. I'm going to slow it down just a little bit. All right, let's start jogging toward that rack. You can see I'm moving because I'm inside the green, so it's happy. It's moving. It's having a great day. Boom. Now, if I look, you can see what the breach was. The breach actually happened to be the knuckle. I thought maybe it would be the, the arm from the angle we were on, but it was the knuckle. And look at the love note that we get. From the, uh, from the status bar here. DCS, Cartesian Position Limit, 
number two, the rack hit G1, group one, which is model zero. It didn't hit the tooling. It hit the, uh, the actual robot. So it's saying the robot model of robot one hit CPC number two, which is your rack. Well, it actually didn't hit the rack. It, it, it came close to the rack, right? That's, that's the whole point is we didn't hit anything, but, but you're seeing what, what we have. So now I can shift reset and uh, I can back this guy up, right? And of course, if I wanted to violate it again, I could do an X minus. There we go. So now you can see that my tooling was getting too close to that rack. You know, we've got the safety buffer around the rack and we got the safety bubble around the tool. Uh, we were getting too close to the rack, so the robot stopped. And you can still see that CPC1 is, is happy as a clam. We're, we're, we're not violating CPC1, we're violating CPC2. Uh, look at the, the data here. Uh, CPC number two, the rack was violated by robot one, user model one. So it's, it's telling me exactly what happened, um, which is really nice. So uh, that is the very quick and, and, and simple um, basic training for DCS, you guys. Um, just make sure that you model your tooling with your user model. Make sure you use the robot model that Fanit gave you. Build your CPCs. Um, maybe do some CPC outs uh, to keep things away from your machines or your conveyors and your racks. And then use CPC ins uh, to, to restrict that robot space. Because um, otherwise, you know, as you know, uh, your robot can go like that. Right, so you've you've taken that much floor space that the robot could have eaten up, and you've restricted it down to that green spot, um, which saves you a lot of floor space, uh, which is your most valuable asset if you're in manufacturing. So, all right, guys, uh, let me know how you liked it. Um, you know, subscribe, like, questions in the comments, and and of course, uh, to learn more and become a super duper pro. Please check out the FANUC training, and um, they'll, they'll take you to the next level. Uh, thanks so much, and have fun coding.